and some time make the time to drive out west into County Clare along the flaggy shore in September or October when the wind and the light are working off each other so that the ocean on one side is wild with foam and glitter and inland among stones the surface of a slate grey lake is lit by the earth lightning of a flock of swans. I think Seamus was a very deep and radical poet. An international poet for the ages really. A man of deep and resonant thinking, of enormous heart, of special grace. A few years ago, Seamus and I decided to take a mutual friend on a few jaunts into the countryside and cheer our friend up. Seamus was the best fun. Um, he was a great companion. Everybody knew who Seamus was, and yet he behaved with such grace and such a kindness to everybody we encountered. Many people here felt incredibly touched and, and blessed by knowing him. We have a summer party each year and we invite a huge range of, of our, all of our writers and he would be the, the thing that raised the game. The whole party felt like it had lifted and you could see people magnetised by, you know, maybe being able to say hello and have a chat. But every single one of them came away feeling that they'd been touched by somebody who was genuinely interested to see them. There was no burden to it. He just had that natural way with people. He sort of lifted the conditions um, as a writer, certainly, but also as a man, you felt slightly taller when Seamus was around. And with Seamus, you just know that the whole body of work has such a sort of urgency and relevance. If you read Death of a Naturalist or if you read Human Chain or anything in between, you find things that are so um, present to you now. The poem that I I go back to want to read a lot. It's called Postscript and it's from spirit level. What is so wonderful then is that the poem moves from a physical, a visible, if you like, a logical landscape, very beautifully rendered, but it's physical. It moves to the metaphysical. So therefore there is in it, as in great writing, there is a vision. The poet has a momentary vision. It's about the heart bursting open. He captures something of that atmosphere of sea and wind and swans that is just unforgettable to me. Not only because it reminds me of the laughs and uh, enormous big-heartedness of those trips, but of Seamus himself. He's captured his own essential spirit in this poem. You are neither here nor there, a hurry through which known and strange things pass, as big soft buffetings come at the car sideways. And catch the heart off guard and blow open. Seamus Heaney was a great poet and a great man. He made us appreciate the rhythms of ordinary life that nature brings to all of us and to understand the triumphs and tragedies of our own making. When we lost Seamus this summer, we lost more than a great poet. We also lost a great spirit, a truly extraordinary man who moved easily between the role of artist and public figure with grace, dignity, and humility. And we lost a genuine friend. I want to say to his wife, Mary, his children, Mick, Christopher, and Catherine, we understand your loss. We can't fully share it. But your father, your husband, as you know better than anyone, was a gift to humankind. He cast a cold eye on all of our frailties, but he never lost his hope in his wonderful words that a long, far tidal wave of justice could rise up when hope and history would rhyme. 
He did a lot of rhyming in his life, always giving us hope. I'm grateful that his legacy will live on through his work and will continue to inspire young people and those of us who are not so young for years to come. He has reached his further shore, leaving us his miracles, his cures, his healing wells. God bless Seamus Heaney and his memory. May we always keep it alive in our hearts.